King Charles has announced that he has cancer, but does not say exactly what type of cancer. In this presentation together today, I'd like to first put my heart out to the royal family, King Charles, and all you guys in the UK that I know follow me here on the channel. I think he's going to be okay because they said they caught it early. I did a lot of research for this. I also researched King Charles's history. He's a healthy guy. He is 75. And what common cancers could he have? And what common cancers could you have? Because I'm an internal medicine doctor, and I really use this channel, yes, for steroid harm reduction, but now I'm spreading more into broad awareness of medical issues for people all over the world with my power and social media. So guys, if you know the royal family or someone, any of you guys in the UK over there, maybe share this with them because they, I know they've knighted like Mick Jagger, I believe, maybe Ozzy Osbourne. So the, the royal family does come out of the castle and like they do hang out with regular people, right? So maybe I'm a regular guy. Maybe they want to help and maybe we could do an interview with King Charles. Reach for the skies, guys. So here we go. What cancer does King Charles potentially have? That's what you're going to learn today. Let's go. So we know that King Charles was going for a routine procedure for something called BPH, an enlargement of the prostate, and they found a separate issue of concern when they were working him up, and they've stated a cancer, unspecified cancer, but it's not prostate cancer. His cancer was caught early, they say, and he is commencing a schedule of regular treatments. Boom, this is good. The king also wanted to share his cancer diagnosis to alleviate speculation and also to assist in public awareness in cancer screening, specifically prostate cancer. But again, they said it's not prostate cancer. He has an enlargement of the prostate. What type of cancer could King Charles have? Here's how you do it when you're an internal medicine physician. He's a 75-year-old man. He's a healthy man. I looked into his re the, the, the health issues he has. Apart from being really healthy, handsome little devil that he is, right, with that incredible <laughs> the history the guy has, he's had some non-cancerous skin lesions on his face removed. He's had a hernia surgery. He's had low back pain. He just has the disc, you know, the back pain, low back pain like anyone else would have. He has something called sausage fingers, that he's commented on multiple times in public. It's not dactylitis, where it's an inflammatory disease from like some type of arthritis condition. He has no diagnosis of that, but he says he has sausage fingers. It's just something congenital. And also he has various hunting and polo injuries because the guy's been like thrown off the horse multiple times, broken ribs, broken his shoulder. He got knocked out once, but otherwise the guy's a beast right? Polo and hunting and all this, the English stuff and the countryside, I could just see it. And otherwise, the guy's been really healthy. He's had BPH. He's had a prostate, enlarged prostate. He went in a few weeks ago, maybe a week or two ago, and he had was going in for a procedure. So let's stop right there and, and let's, let's think from a public health epidemiological perspective, what could a, a cancer, what type of cancer could a healthy 75-year-old man like him have? Here we go. Skin cancer, right? Very common. There's, 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 and he's had skin uh, lesions removed, but they didn't specify what kind of cancer. You could have squamous cell, basal cell, right? Those are, those are, they're, they're cancers, but they don't really metastasize to death. They can be, they can be disfiguring and you have to have them removed. Malanoma, that is no joke. So you need to screen for skin cancer for, of course, all the cancers, but malanoma is no joke. And malanoma is on the differential diagnosis. When he was being worked up for the prostate, maybe around the anus or in his skin. Remember, this is the king of England. So they're looking over this guy all the time. Maybe they found a malanoma. You don't know. Could be possible. Okay, or another type of skin cancer. Let's keep going. Next, for a 75-year-old man, prostate cancer. 
but they said it's not prostate cancer. They probably biopsy it as a large prostate. I mean, this kind of guy is getting MRIs, right? He's getting biopsy. They have, they imagine the medical team they bring together for this guy. I mean, I'm in America, right? So I know what can imagine. I know what they do over there. I mean, it's amazing. And I want to see all you guys get the King's level care because I have the anabolic doc app.com and we're doing this for you guys. And it's, it is possible for you to do it yourself with the best care you could have. Prostate cancer, put that to the side because he's got BPH. They said doesn't have prostate cancer. Next, lung cancer. These are the common cancers, right? He doesn't smoke. He doesn't have COPD. So lung cancer, we're going to put that to the side too. Colorectal cancer. Boom. This is my number one. This is what I what I would just, if I'm just rolling the dice, gambling in Vegas for a guy that he's got to be screened all the time, but maybe he hasn't had a colonoscopy in a couple of years or maybe 10 years like we do in America. Or can you imagine the guy hasn't had a colonoscopy? It's highly unlikely. He's the king of England. This guy has like doctors lined up for him. Imagine this, when they're, when they're working, when the guy's prostate, they're working on his rectum, digital rectal examination, right? And if they're going to do a procedure on the guy for BPH, they're going to go through the urethra. So you're going to think in that region, the perineum, colorectal cancer, maybe skin cancer, testicle cancer, rare on the side, rare, but potentially, but that's a younger man's diagnosis, bladder cancer. Maybe they found something that, again, I don't know if the guy's had any symptoms. So usually people have cancer symptoms. We're going to go into admit they're fatigued, they're losing weight, they're not eating. Cancer, worry about it. And you're going to start screening for everything from brain cancer, pancreatic cancer, colon cancer, lymphoma, leukemias. I'm going to review this in the end for you guys. So he was having a procedure they talk about, and then he was incidentally found to have this cancer. Right, so you, you think, well, what would they find when they're working on the prostate? Right, so digital rectal examination, that's why I'm thinking colorectal cancer and something that's common for a man that's 75 that's otherwise healthy. Now, let, let's talk about the procedures while we're down here talking about the prostate in this perineum region. So man that's even 40, 50, with or without testosterone, has BPH, enlargement of the prostate. It's annoying, right? And, and, and when you're really getting older, like him, 75, you could have uh, an obstruction where you can't pee and you get uroseptic. You can get really sick. I mean, I've cared for old men, in, uh, elderly men in, in the hospital that are uroseptic and you have to call up the uh, urology doctors. They have to come in. They have to board out. It's called a terp. So he could have had that because it's England and he's 75. And, you know, at that age, you just want to open the prostate up and be done with it. So he might have had a terp. Next would be different, uh, less invasive procedures for you guys to know for the prostate, Urolift. They go through the urethra, right? So that's why when they're accessing his urethra and bladder, maybe they found some, some cancer in urethra or the bladder. That's why I'm just thinking out loud for you guys. Next one is the, the Holmium Laser. This is the new stuff, guys. It's new technology I'm always bringing to you on the app. We have a photo-selective vaporization of the prostate. We have aqua ablation for the prostate. And we have something called prostatic arterial embolization. Woohoo! We got all these procedures. So when my prostate and I can't pee, I got BPH, I am absolutely going for one of these procedures by a great urologist because I don't want to have a problem with the prostate. It's annoying. It could be deadly in the end from sepsis, but it's really before that annoying and it can affect your sex. So that's the prostate stuff. Next, let's move on. If I'm gambling, I think he's got something they found during that procedure, colorectal cancer or bladder or something. Hopefully they're going to be, hopefully it's not lung or some really bad rare cancer, rare cancer. Now, let's move down to the common uh, yet less likely cancers, again, without symptoms, because we don't know if he had symptoms. The guy looks healthy. He's not sick. He's been conducting regular activities. The guy's a beast. So here's the chronic things they may have found on workup when they just did. Imagine the workup with the labs. I want you guys to have all these labs. That's why I have the app. So chronic leukemia, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, CLL. I have many patients that are in their 60s or older that are living with it, but you have to get a diagnosis of it by a hematology oncology doctor and including internal medicine doctor like me. Next is CML, 
AML. Those are the leukemias. That's bone stuff. And again, like multiple myeloma, is, do they come up with that? Less likely, rare. It's out there. It's not so rare, but it's just, I don't see it coming out. He has multiple myeloma. Doubtful. But leukemias are going to be common. You're going to see, boom, he has... He has CLL. Okay, well, a lot of people have it and they can live with it and they have to be treated. Next is lymphomas. That's the lymphoid tissue. And non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, follicular lymphoma is most common for someone in this age range. All treatable, all potentially great outcomes for this stuff. This is the rare stuff, guys. Rare pancreatic and brain cancer and rare aggressive lymphomas and leukemias are rare and it's deadly. But these are the common ones, and maybe he's got a common, something common that he can really treat and he can do well for years. So, again, these are found incidentally. Like, you know, the guy's not sick as hell. He's not losing weight. He looks good. But you, you do see on labs, guys, on incidental lab work. Imagine the guy's going for a prostate procedure, but they're going to do a lot of labs on the guy, and they're looking at things all the time, blood pressure. His ABC, imagine his ABCDs. You know this guy's got unbelievable doctors like me and better. I mean, like the top of the top of the world helping this guy, looking ahead at predicting. But we can do it now with you guys. We have so much technology. So also the CBC. So maybe he had some malaise and fatigue and he's got an abnormal CBC. And that's where they found maybe a, a chronic leukemia or maybe a, a chronic lim a low grade lymphoma, God, God forbid, God willing. Uh, malaise and fatigue, loss of appetite, the night sweats, you know, maybe he, he was found, to, incidentally found, found to have some, some uh, uh, lymph node swelling, maybe the axillary, maybe the groin, maybe he had this, you know, or skin rashes, something that was weird on history when he went in and they were working on, you know, the prostate uh, procedure with him. I pray for him and I pray for all you guys in the world. Everyone, please, Get screening done. Do your ABCDs. The S after the D is screening for cancer. It's on the anabolicdocapp.com. Even women, skin cancer, breast cancer, female cancers, colon cancer is increasing in America because people are being screened. And obesity has something to do with it too, but the screening is horrible because people don't have access to doctors. Over in England, I'm not making political statements here, guys, but they have a socialized medical system. I don't know if it's good. We should have that. Probably we shouldn't have that. I'll put my foot down on that. We should have access for everyone. We're the, one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Why don't we have better access for people? There's got to be a better way. I'm done with the politics. Political spiel, thank you. And But beyond that, you got to do it yourself. Colon screening, prostate cancer screening, regular checkups by great nurse practitioners now, and know your labs and your ABCDs. Thank you so much, guys. And you guys in the U UK, love you guys. I really hope uh, the royal family, uh, I know they reach out to you guys. They're, they're going to pull together on this. And I really hope that King Charles comes out with, with this uh, soon and and because people are really, really going to be wondering what kind of cancer does he have and how does he look in the future and what can we do for him and is he going to be okay? So we need to know what the cancer specifically is. Hopefully I covered that today for you guys. Thank you so much, guys. Get the screening, get on the Anabolic Doc app and stay strong and healthy.